More perspective on the race for the California U.S. Senate seat. Let's bring in our panel of distinguished guests, uh, Cynthia Cowie, San Diego Young Republicans president, uh, James Canning, host of uh, the Flag Talk and also Democratic strategist. Um, as well, we have uh, Judge Laura Hallgren, a legal expert, retired judge now, um, and also um, Matt Hall as well, journalist and opinion writer. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Let's start at the end of the line, Matt Hall. First of all, this is a really rare, prestigious job, U.S. Senator, that comes up for grabs not very often. It's a big deal. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's rare that there's a, an uncontested seat for U.S. Senate. I was doing some research uh, earlier, and I think eight times um, we've had uh, an open seat, uh, open up in, in, in 50 years, right? You have 24-year veterans, Diane Feinstein, 31 years. Um, so these seats don't come open. So it is interesting that we have uh, a big ticket race and a very snooze fest of an election, let's be real. Um, and there's some San Diego ties to it, right? Adam Schiff is arguably uh, the front runner or will be the, f you know, uh, pick his, his second place challenger. His wife is from San Diego. Uh, Steve Garvey, if you don't know who Steve Garvey is in San Diego, you gotta get your San Diego card revoked. Right. Everyone can remember 84 and LCS. Right, and all of us time with the Dodgers as well. Um, Judge, no doubt that our voters have already seen that they had two choices when it came to U.S. Senate. Can you explain what that's all about? Yes, it probably was surprising to many to see the Senate race listed twice. That is because we are doing two separate terms. One, the special election, the special primary, is to fill the term that was vacated when Senator Feinstein died last year. Currently, we have an appointed person, LaFonza Butler, is in that seat temporarily until the special election is concluded. And then we have the other election, which is for the full six-year term, which will begin in January of 2025. The person elected in the special election will only serve for a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Cynthia, let's talk about Steve Garvey, because he is a complete political newcomer, um, but he seems to be get, getting traction, especially of late. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's because with the name ID, as Matt alluded to, he was beloved as a baseball player for the Padres and the Dodgers. So I think it is possible for someone to be able to make that headway if they had great name ID and the possibility for fundraising. As a young Republican, it makes me very eager and excited to see the possibility of a Republican being at the top of the ballot. A lot of people predict Schiff to go basically the distance, and then it becomes who is number two. Um, there are Republican votes that could put Garvey on top, but what's, what's, what's interesting also, um, James, is that a lot of the attack ads have really come from Schiff against the Orange County representative that he is, he, he's running against, mm -hmm. uh, Katie Porter. And what is the reason for that? Is that he believes that Garvey may be a less formidable opponent in a runoff? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, I think the reality is you got uh, Garvey, who is a Trump Republican, and he's in there. And so if Porter gets in, it's going to be a little bit harder for Garvey. And, and that also creates party infighting. So I'd rather go against the Republican. You know, it's kind of like reality TV here. We got Garvey used to throw baseballs. You know, got Trump out there. You got Carl DeMaio, who's on radio. You know, I mean, it's, it's the Republican Party of reality here. And so Schiff wants to go against that because people are getting tired of reality TV. You know, and then, Judge, there, there are the California voters because a lot of times you can do a ton of polling and predict how the voters may decide, and sometimes you can. I mean, this has been a state which is largely seen, largely seen as progressive, but this is the state that also affirmed the death penalty and decided not to repeal it. It's a state that decided to have another political newcomer, Republican Arnold Schwarzenegger, lead them as governor. So a lot of times we truly don't know what may happen. Well, that's true. Um, also, the voter turnout makes a big difference. And in the primary, which is a lower turnout, there is a different proportion, perhaps, of um, Republican and Democrats going to the polls what's going to happen in November. The, the enthusiasm that the voters have for the presidential candidates may drive the turnout for the Senate race as well. And if we have a Republican and a Democrat going against each other, then even though most people would say, well, this is a blue state, who knows? Depends on the voter interest. When it comes to Adam Schiff, Matt Hall, extraordinary amounts of money have been spent, more than has ever been spent on a U.S. Senate race. I think between his last campaign coffers and, and what he has raised this time, Adam Schiff has something close to $50 million. Um, but there's so much at stake here, not only for just California, but also for the entire nation, which is basically looking to hold on to a very prestigious Democratic seat here in California. 
Yeah, I mean, look, there's 100 of these jobs on the planet, and it's really a, a global enterprise. You've got wars in Gaza, wars in Ukraine, um, and so the politics are interesting, right? The Democrats and Republicans are trying to elbow each other and poke each other in the eyes to, to win control of the Senate. It's a very, very razor-thin margin. Um, you know, but California is not, you know, sorry, is not going to send Steve Garvey to the U.S. Senate. Steve, even if Steve Garvey wins tonight, which he very well may, he'll finish a distant second to probably Adam Schiff um, just because of California politics, right? It, Cal the interesting thing, and I've said this before, is we're talking about a, an election on, on March 5th. Most people in California don't even know that there's an election today, I would venture to say. No one pe paid attention until after the holidays, so it's really a two-week uh, uh, turnout for this election, and you're going to see the turnout be very low. It could be the lowest in California presidential primary history. It could be less than 30 percent. Okay, we'll see how all of that shakes up. Okay, we're going to get you guys some stools because we know that you're going to be with <laughs> us uh, throughout the evening. Uh, Lynn, in your perspective, uh, thanks very much for now. Thank you. Catherine. Thank you.